uh, which pr payment processing service do you use? She says, uh, QuickBooks Online closed my account because my niche is cannabis CEOs. I'm looking into Square. So, um, and this was actually a, a fellow accountant who, uh, accountant entrepreneur who posed this question. And I, um, I wanted to let you know, so I'll give you the answer to my question and then I'll give you the answer to the question that you really want to know. What you asked me was, what payment processing service do I use? So in the first number of years of running my firm, I used Bill.com, which I loved. Can I just tell you, I love that. And even though I'm not using them anymore, it does not diminish my love at all for Bill.com. I mean, let me count the ways. Number one, I could set up automatic upfront um, electronic payments to pretty much run themselves. Secondly, I had the option of either for all clients saying bank account only. I don't want to deal with credit cards and merchant processing fees. I want to pull from the bank account only. And I paid 49 cents per, for incoming transaction, no matter how large the payment. Or I could open it up to the client base to take credit cards, which I never did, and that's fine. Um, on the rare occasion in about four years of using bill.com that somebody said, hey, I really want to use my credit card to get points, or I really want to use my credit card because we haven't worked together yet and I don't want to give you my account and routing number, I gave them a trial period. I sent them a PayPal link, I prepared a one-off invoice. I mean, this was two clients out of 70 in a number of years of, of providing service. And you know what? I let them use my PayPal link, they can use their credit card. And a couple months later, I said, hey, can we switch over to bill.com and we can enter your account and routing number? Yeah, no problem, fine. Um, also, bill.com has the um, ability for me to pull ad hoc um, amounts. Hey, Diane, welcome to the show. Looking forward to your questions, your opinions, and your answers as well. And um, so I could, pull, I could pull ad hoc, not just recurring monthly, but if something came up, we did a project or a one-time thing, or somebody needed me to be a hero for the afternoon, whatever, I could, I could do a one-time pull, no big deal. Their card information was already on file. I didn't have to, you know, it was behind an input mask, security up the wazoo for bill.com, and it synchronized with QuickBooks Desktop, which we were using at the time. It works really well, really good tech support. We're using uh, practice ignition these days, which has similar payment capabilities, only it's a little more clunky for ad hoc one-off payments because it's really built for more recurring engagement and stuff you know about from the, from the get-go. It's more built for something like that, but it has integrated into it a, it has integrated into the platform the ability to massively speed up my sales cycle and by helping me get proposals into the hands of my clients a lot faster. So they're thinking about it, they're asking me for services, and when it's time to get them a proposal, I can go zip, 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 zip. I mean, sometimes even during the live call in which they're asking me questions, I can put together a suite of services and say, here you go. Hey, Danielle, welcome to the show. So glad you're here. So um, I love it. And one thing I prefer over in practice ignition over bill.com is I can allow um, credit cards or or ACH pulls on a client by client basis, which is nice. Whereas bill.com is all or nothing. I can shoot, I can pick and choose, and I really like that. Um, that being said, the second part of what this person really asked is she is looking for something that can help her in the cannabis industry because the issue is that in general financial systems operate nationally, and federally speaking, cannabis is not yet legal. So how can you operate without green dollars um, if you can't use merchant service processing? I mean, how do you get paid? So of course, there are um, new payment systems that have emerged in part because of the local uh, legalization of cannabis. So two examples of that are um, cryptocurrency and services like greenhouse, um, oh, greenhouse payment systems and uh, Payoneer. You can look into them. You can Google like merchant services cannabis. Just make sure, so if you're asking me this as an accountant, um, just make sure to pay attention to how these systems work because some of them are designed to work between the cannabis company's customer and the cannabis um, dispensary or the growers themselves. And you have to look into them to make sure that you can use them as well as an outside service provider. 
So um, look into that. And so those are the two parts of what I'm suggesting. What I can tell you though, is that you said you were considering Square. I don't think that's gonna help you. I think you're gonna need some kind of a specialty service. Um, so there are some debit cards emerging, kind of like you fill up the card and then you, you use the card to pay what you're looking for. And if they're locally managed, then they might, they might be, um, you know, you might be able to operate that and use that service legally, even if the federal, you know, not necessarily at a federal level. Um, I have read some stories about um, cannabis companies getting burned because they were using merchant services, national merchant services. And the only way that they can do that really is if they're not being forthright about the industry that they're in. And the merchant service companies or the, um, the, the federal authorities, when they found out, they actually froze those transactions. So not only did the cannabis company, whether it's a grower or a dispenser, they didn't get paid and neither did the merchant services organization. So everybody was pissed off and, you know, so that didn't end well.